Stop Slotting the Stupid Way, part two. So we did a video, don't even go watch it, although there is a card here. But basically, you don't ever want to slot an end mill. But here's the crazy thing. So let's say we want a slot in here. So we're gonna use a smaller end mill. Today we're gonna machine a 0.4 inch wide slot. And I would have always used uh, probably a quarter inch, maybe a 3 8 inch end mill, giving me a little bit of wiggle room. But Tim Paul, who's one of the cam gurus and a, a really good guy and a, a really smart guy you should follow him at least on instagram here um, was texting me and said hey saunders try out a pretty crazy to me like totally crazy um chip load on this tool a 3 16 tool and i had always sort of believed that anything under quarter inch starts to get into the be careful area and under one eighth of an inch is like okay whoa is me fragile tooling blah 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 so Tim was mentioning chip per tooth of like three thousandths. And that, you know, my go-to, and we talked about this in our speeds and feeds videos, was one thou per tooth. And that's okay, and there's nothing wrong with that, but um, I was pretty blown away at this. So we did one test cut. Um, let's do a couple more test cuts here, and we'll also look at how we did it in Fusion and the results, and, and let's see what conclusions we can draw from this. Looks pretty good, I tell you. How freaking awesome is that? I mean, seriously, folks. Um, like, uh, who, who would have thought? I just wouldn't think you would use a smaller shank tool to do that, but it works. So let's. See if we can push it a little bit harder. So according to Fusion, that first one was, machining time, uh, one minute and 27 seconds for the adaptive. So um, I didn't count it, but I have it from the video footage, which I'll post right here. So how long was it? How does that compare? I've always been curious, but here we can use machining time, not as an absolute, but, rel but rather a relative thing. So the next one I've got which we're going to run right now should be 55 seconds which is almost 50 percent actually it is 50 percent quicker faster two things we're going to change let's go over the first settings here the one we just ran so 3 16 carbide tool from lakeshore carbide part number 360316 s x part uh, link in the video description here she is stubby folks 
go short. I cannot emphasize this enough. It makes for crummy video because it doesn't look as nice. Shorten up your tools, please. 10,000 RPMs, which is a little under 500 surface feet a minute, and 60 inches a minute, which is 2,000th per tooth. It's a three flute end mill. So Tim was saying go 3,000th per tooth, so 0 0.003. That puts me at 90 inches a minute. So here's the problem. When I was running this as a test cut, I don't think the 440 can ramp up to 90 inches a minute in such a narrow slot. Every machine has some amount of acceleration and deceleration. And we could get there if we went to a half inch or three quarter inch wide slot. Um, we'll leave it at 75 and I'll look and watch. I'm only watching Path Pilot to see the output, of which I'm sure there's more behind the scenes. It might be reaching 75 for a short period of time, but um, that's one of the biggest things with CNC machines that we don't appreciate or I don't appreciate is how much goes into the smoothness of a cell and decel and, and all the control parameters. Um, we'll try 75 though. Oops, I'm supposed to be in the other one one disregard that 75 inches here and change that back and on the first one we were taking a 50 thou optimal load so 0 0.05 divided by our tool diameter 0.1875 that's actually a quarter a 25 percent width of cut so that's a pretty good uh, ratio for high-speed machining you know something between 10 and 30 percent of your diameter when you start when you're between say 45 and 55 percent the problem is the same the guy was just explaining it don't, don't do it I'll leave it at that to not bore you and then you can go up to like 70 or 80 percent but that's a you've got chip evacuation and it's a different style of cutting if we did but the problem is the only way I know to improve this to see if it works is to take that increased optimal load, which boy, it, uh, that's gonna be 40%. So let's try that. I think it's gonna work okay. So 75 inches a minute with the 0 0.075 optimal load will give us again a 55 second tool path. Uh, the cam model for this Fusion model is in the link description if you guys want to download it and play it yourself. Let's make some chips here. I still can't believe it. Look at the quality of the sidewall finish. You know, we are doing a 2D contour cleanup, but I mean, just awesome. Let's throw in our second piece here. The one downside with lower end vices is both parallels won't always sit perfectly. Close enough on the X. Use a non-440 sized hammer. Oh, they seated there, awesome. All right, load up our code. Rock and roll. No problem. Oh my god. Oh my god. Forty percent width with the cut. Uh, two, almost two x depth of cut. And you can see the thing up the line. I don't know. Anybody know if there's a way to tell what it's really getting up to on an acceleration? But oh, this is so cool! We're getting good chip evacuation. This is one reason why I like uh, fog busters, because I can turn up the air pressure and I can do more direct blowing, which to me is better than a low PSI flood, I think. At least that's what we that good result. I am going to cheat here and blow this out. Okay, so I can see some variation in the sidewall. That's okay, because this 2D contour here should clean it up. And if our post didn't turn the spindle on and off between offs, this would be faster here. <laughs> That's awesome. 60 inches a minute, beautiful cleanup. Turn 
the cameras off. There's some floor, you can see there obviously is some deflection happening because the floor is a little bit inferior to what I've seen before. Um, and you could do a horizontal to clean it up. Um, I'm actually, hold on. I'm intentionally staying up off the floor in my fusion so that I'm only cutting the sidewall on the cleanup and that is beautiful. So the takeaway for me, folks, first off, thank you to Tim, Paul, and Tim, if you're watching this, can you post in the comments below some of, he had some more theoretical takeaways about depths of diameter and radial and axial cut, which is really good information if you're trying to figure out what you can do with these tools, but don't baby your tools. Our Tormach machines, lower horsepower, lower rigidity than your $100,000 plus machines, do really, really well with small tooling. I stay away from half inch tooling, I use a quarter a lot. I'm now going to use 3 16 more because I can get into more corners and I don't, you know, most of the time I don't care about, well, it's funny because this was about speed, but a lot of times it's also about efficiency. So speed for me might mean, you know, a really good recipe that can do more work while I'm away doing something else. Adaptive strategies in Fusion 360 mean I'm not as worried about uh, chip, you know, it's going to maintain a good chip load. Um, just awesome stuff. Use short tools. And man, this 440, it can do a lot. We, uh, it was funny when Tim texted me, we had just filmed that video on the herb grinder, uh, which was sort of my first try at 316 tools for more than I've used them for in the past. So, um, more to come folks. I'm really excited about this. Uh, I'm also excited to get back into project videos. We kind of went on like a two year detour of learning how to really nail down some of our machining and I love that but we've got some cool projects up coming up too. So with that folks, I appreciate you guys thumbs up to commenting or subscribing. Otherwise, see you next Wednesday.